to settle out your tax debt, the three top programs would be the offering compromise, non-collectible, hardship payment plan. The IRS offering compromise might be hands down the best on paper. Whatever the tax debt is with the IRS, you offer them an amount and they forgive the rest. How are the two other programs, settlement programs? One key aspect is the 10 year rule by the IRS. The IRS only has 10 years to collect. This is known as the collection statute at expiration date. To simplify, let's call it the 10 year rule. Of course, throughout the 10 years, they try to issue bank levies, wage garnishments, federal tax liens, everything in their power to get 100% of what you owe. The reason that this is a key factor is because what if you have owed that money already for eight years? Now there's only two years left on the statute date. And if that's the case, the offering compromise program might be the weaker of the three programs. If you submit an offering compromise program and it fails, that 10 year statute date, you're gonna extend the time frame if it fails. The extension is the duration of the offering compromise plus an additional six months. And under those conditions, the non-collectible program and the hardship payment plan do not extend the 10 year time frame. But when the statute date is far away, let's say you've only owed the money to the IRS for two years. That means the statute date is eight years away. Under those conditions, the offering compromise program is the better option than the non-collectible or the hardship payment plan. The base of all three programs revolve around your current finances. And your current finances, it's a snapshot of three different things. Number one is, what is your gross income? And this is income from all sources, whether it's wages, self-employment, rental income, social security, alimony, child support. Then it gets subtracted by your expenses. They allow for reasonable expenses, such as housing and utilities, car payments, car maintenance, out-of-pocket healthcare costs or health insurance, any type of student loan debt repayments, including even if you owe the state delinquent taxes. Also, if you're paying for child care for, for children under the ages of 13, they allow for food, clothing, and miscellaneous expenses. And some of these expenses are actually locally. The final number is the net monthly disposable income. If that monthly net disposable income is below zero, then you're looking at either the offering compromise or the non-collectible program. However, if it's still a positive, then the calculation does come in for either the offer and compromise program or the hardship payment plan. The difference would be for the offer and compromise program, it gets calculated how much you could give a lump sum to the IRS versus the hardship payment program would be how much of a monthly payment you could repay the IRS. And of course, the last aspect is your assets. What is the net equity in your assets that you do have? And if so, if you have a net value of items you could liquidate under the formula of a quick sale value, that is what the IRS would want as the offer for your offer and compromise. Now, if you have a special circumstances where you would not be able to liquidate, sell, refinance, borrow against, you must show that in proof to the IRS and the IRS may consider that special circumstance and push through the offer and compromise. 